Welcome to Change Talks, interviews that spread ideas. And today's interview is with Steve Chandler. And Steve has more than 20 years experience helping professionals dramatically improve the success in their lives. Through his work with clients and from being an author of over 30 books, Steve knows how to make a shift in a person's mind in order to transform their lives. On top of his coaching, Steve has also created the Coaching Prosperity School, which is a year-long education on how coaches can develop a successful coaching practice. This interview is one to listen to because Steve has the benefit of knowing how to coach and how coaches can build their business. Listen intently and you'll pick up some real gems from this interview. Well, I apologize. I, I'm not really very conversant with Skype. So I didn't realize the contact request. No, that's okay. Are you more used to face to face? All right, good. So, is are you ready to go? Absolutely. Yeah. And did you get my questions, or um, are, are these? Yes, gonna... I, I did. I Brilliant. saw them. Um, and they're great. Brilliant. Brilliant. Good. Well, um, what normally happens in these interviews is that I, I normally do a pre-recorded uh, introduction. So when it goes out to everyone else, um, you'll have an introduction on your audio. But so in this section, I'll just I'll just a ask you the questions and we and we can get on with it. Okay. Good. Now, can you hear hear me well enough? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, am I all right on your end? Yeah, you're great. Now, there. Outside the office here, there is a small dog who barks once in a while. I wonder if you're picking that, you are picking that up. No, no it, it needs to bark a bit louder for me to hear it so far. Okay, <laughs> all right, so I won't go ag agitated or anything. No, no, that's fine. Okay, so the first question um, that I have is, is just quite simply, who do you work with mostly and, and what do you find they mostly need work with? Well, right now I work mostly with coaches, hmm. but I have a full spectrum of clients. I still work with corporations, I work with universities, I work with various schools. So I have a wide spectrum of clients from all walks of life. But my primary focus now in this year of my life is working with other coaches. Hmm. And do you have a set amount of coaches that you that you will see at a certain period of time, like five coaches a year or something like that? Or I, I used to have things like that, but now what I have is what I call a coaching prosperity school. Mm. And so people come into the school, and I work with the coaches as a group, and they receive all kinds of things, including live seminars and daily messages. And so that's how I work. Now, I have also a few individual clients who are high-end coaches who want to grow their practice in really big ways. Mm. And I do a few of those, but I don't have a certain number that I have to do. All right, okay. And um, how would you describe your style of coaching? And um, just from the two examples that you gave there, is your style quite different to when you do group coaching as opposed to when you do individual? I would say it's just absolutely reckless and improvised. I I really have my client be the agenda, even in the group. I like to have the group present challenges, role play. I play absurd, unorthodox games like I can get you any client. Mm -hmm. And that's a game I made up. And then I have a coach say, well, what about this client? I've called him three times and, and we talk about that client and what the coach has done so far and, and I work with the coach. So most of my work is very improvisational. It's not very structured mm -hmm. and it's not as if that's the right way to do it, but it's how I love to work because I found over the years, I've been doing this 20 years, mm -hmm. that I can create a breakthrough faster that way. By just um, having it, no particular structure, just having it, let it all flow essentially. Let it flow. You, you come to me, you're my client. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what's in the way of you being really successful right now. Why don't you have the clients you want? What's your reason, your excuse? And let's work. Let's jump in there. And, um, and so we just work that way. Right. I don't have any set process. Now, I draw on a lot of things that help people once I find out where they're stuck. 
Hmm. I might use versions of Byron Katie's work. I went to her nine-day school. Many things I draw on if they feel like they would uh, apply to a certain client who's stuck. Okay. And um, just uh, going into the, the third question that we had here about when you work with clients, not just in the prosperity school, but in individually, um, and looking at your experience, were you always like that in regards to it was an easy flow or did you start with a structure and as a result of like, an experience um, you ended up being easier to go into the flow because of your experience yes it, it, you're right it is because of the experience the more a person coaches the more intuitive they can be it sounds like a paradox it sounds like you would have more structure more information more systems the more you coached but for me, it's been the opposite. So at the beginning, when I coached people, I would sort of imitate my own coach. Mm -hmm. That was my role model. That was the structure I saw. I would imitate how he coached. Mm -hmm. And um, and then later, I developed my own way of coaching that worked even faster than that. So it just evolves. And the great thing I believe about coaching is that every coach can create their own way of doing it. It isn't like psychotherapy or you know, being a doctor or a lawyer where you have to play within very severe limits in what you do. In coaching, there are no limits. And that's, that's why it's so powerful. And I suppose because you've worked that way, you, you feel more comfortable working with pretty much anybody. I mean, like you have your certain um, thing that you're working on now, but because you've worked in that way, you could pretty much work with anyone in all walks of life. Yes, and, and that took a while to realize that there are no intimidating professions. There are no people that um, I couldn't work with. It took a, a while to realize that, hmm. but um, you, you're right. It is any walk of life. I have a client who's a poet. I have a client who's a custodian. I have a client who's a CEO of a very large international company. I have a client who owns a music studio. So it doesn't matter what walk of life someone's in. The problems are always very similar. And the challenges people have are very similar. And they're lying to themselves about their own limits and about their own frozen personality. Mm -hmm. And my work is to show them their opportunities that they don't see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was re recently reading your book, How to Get Clients, and you talk about um, getting clients through conversations, essentially, um, having a conversation with a person and, and um, then asking them if they want to continue uh, with that. And when you look at other coaches in your, in your school and when you, when you observe around, what do you see the common mistakes are um, that they're making when attempting to build a client base? Well, they make the the primary mistake that I see coaches make, and when they're starting out in their coaching practice, that keeps them from getting clients is they apply really outmoded forms of marketing and sales and social networking. They think that will lead to coaching clients, and it never does. So it's a misunderstanding of the product you have to offer. And it's a misunderstanding of your service. So the biggest mistake is for a coach to try to market, to try to contact lots and lots of people, to try to get his name out there, to tr all these things that you would do if you were selling a very small product like a, a, a little audio program that only costs $29, then you would use marketing techniques. Mm. But people, it would be like a brain surgeon trying to use marketing techniques mm. and putting up a billboard on the highway saying 50% uh, off brain surgery this month only. You would never call that guy. And so um, that's, what, that's the biggest mistake coaches make. They try to sell, they try to market, they, they do all these desperate things to try to get clients and they miss what's sitting right in front of them. Mm. And, and, you know, I can perfectly understand, see why someone would do that because when you look at all the marketing, a lot of the marketing that's aimed at coaches, 
it's, it is about building your list and making a product and selling it to your product as a way of, of generating clients through that. Have you seen from your experience that that, that really works for, for actual when you want to get one-to-one -one or, or group clients? Yeah, I've, seen, I've never seen it work. And I've worked with coaches for 20 years. I have never seen that process work. Now, I've seen coaches being sold by people who do websites, who do lists, who do search engines and all these things. But it's a misunderstanding of what coaching is mm. to, to, to use those techniques for coaching. It doesn't work. Okay. Okay. And you, you, have a co you have a coach yourself, I don't know if you're still being coached by him, but Steve Hardison, uh, who calls the ultimate coach. And what, what is it about Steve's coaching that has, that has had you going back year upon year? Today? Well, he, he's so powerful. He is the most powerful, transformative coach I've ever been around. And I've known him for years. I've watched him work with other people. I've experienced his work with me. And he's just profoundly powerful. And he is he can see right through my excuses or when i try to sell my limitations and what's not possible he can see right away what i'm doing mm. and we can get rid of that and go right to okay let's do what's possible let's do it right now and he's so powerful that way that um i have i use him every year and he's very expensive Mm. He's he's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to work for one year, it's but if money. I did, it's a tremendous amount of money. And however, if I didn't make that back very quickly mm. by by our work together, I would never pay it. Mm. I would never dream of paying that money just to feel good or something. So it's always made back right away, and sometimes faster than I want to make it back. Mm. So, so, the, so the results are very tangible. They're not. It's not just yeah. I, absolutely. I, I feel great with him. It's it's the it's yeah. I get I get that money back pretty quickly when I work with him. Right. And I think clients need to hold their coach accountable for understanding what they want out of the relationship. So, for example, with Steve, I want a financial boost out of working with him. I want a certain financial goal to be hit, and he understands that, and he says, "Great, so let's work on that." Mm. And and if it didn't occur because of my work with him, there'd be no way I'd pay him year after year. Mm. And when you look at Steve's model, and you look at kind of the things he does, he's, he he doesn't do the social media thing, and, and you know, if you look at his website, it's pretty basic. But he, you know, he's by the sounds of it, he gets a lot of the clients that and paying one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. So it's almost um, a good model for the for the way that you portray coaching and the fact that it's not through social media, it's not through making products, it's through word of mouth and um, and referrals. I imagine. You're right. That's exactly right. And he is a great role model for it. In fact, he did not ever have a website. He didn't even want a website. But his daughter-in-law was in the website business, and she said, please let me make you one. I'm starting out in business. And he said, oh, all right. So his website's only there because um, she talked him into it. He doesn't need it. He didn't even want one. Mm. He doesn't get clients through his website. He doesn't get it through social media. He gets clients through referrals and through conversations he has throughout the day with other human beings. Mm. And by the way, that's how everybody...